The Bank of Canada actually shocked markets with a 25 basis point rate hike yesterday, joining the Reserve Bank of Australia in continued tightening paths in an effort to tame inflation. The moves by these central banks are sending yields higher as investors rethink their bets on rate cuts later this year. And even consider the possibility of more tightening from the Federal Reserve. We're back with Katie Kaminsky, who is the Alpha Simplex Chief Research Strategist and Portfolio Manager here. So as we weigh the different central bank policies that are being moved forward with throughout the world, if you're the U.S. now looking at what other entities are doing, what is that set up for the talks at the next meeting here? Well, I think what's interesting today is you're thinking about a situation, bets that they would actually hike were very low until recently. I heard a stat today, it's roughly around 30% view that they might still hike. Mm. And that has creeped up a lot. Mm -hmm. Another thing to note, in the last two weeks, interest rates have been going up as well. So the market is really starting to focus a little bit more that, hey, wait a minute, data is not a slam dunk here. It is not clear that inflation is gonna go down quickly. We're in a very difficult situation in that if, as long as inflation stays high, the Fed's mandate is to regulate it. Thus, we're probably going to be here longer than people would like. And as long as we're sort of hoping that things will pause, then people are buying because they're thinking it's probably not going to be that bad. So um, let's talk about the implications for the bond market of all of this, which you touched on a little bit before, because there's a lot of other things that are at play in the bond market. In addition to just watching the Fed, there's the fact that the uh, Treasury is now going to be selling, what, a trillion dollars worth of securities that got sort of backed up during the debt ceiling uh, situation. So what are the implications for not just bond prices, but also um, the sort of competitive nature of equities and bonds here? Well, I think the biggest challenge this year is that you've seen that the bond markets and the stock markets have disagreed. Stock markets have looked like we're probably going to get a soft landing, let's figure this out, whereas bond markets with the inversion in the curve have been in some sense warning us of a recession. And so what we're seeing now is that stock markets are looking pretty strong, but bond markets have to react if we should actually pause or have less tightening. So just think about it this way. Inflation's high, the Fed pauses, what happens to long-term cash flows? They're at risk as long as we don't see inflation go down fast enough. So I think people are underestimating the potential weakness in fixed income. And this is particularly true during rising rate environments, something that most of us haven't seen throughout most of our investment career. Looking at statistics over empirical periods with higher inflation, fixed income struggles when you have higher rates and when you have inflation. Thus, I would expect the longer end of the curve to break out we're getting closer to there now. We've seen a little bit of movement more recently, although earlier in the year we hit close to a, 10, a 4% on the 10-year. The question is going to be, could we eventually have a breakout where we have a steeper curve? But at the same time, isn't there really a support under the bond market right now because people want that yield? I agree there is, but I think what it's, I've been asking this question over and over again with, <laughs> internally in the office. When is this going to happen? When are we going to have a steeper yield curve? And I think what we think is that it's going to take a realization from investors, wait a minute, inflation is really going to stick around longer. Wages are going to be stickier, wage pressure, and thus you'll actually have to think about the implications for long-term cash flows. So far, the market is still hasn't realized that yet hit 4% on the on the 10 year and see if it keeps going. And I think that could be an indication. Just a really quick follow here. If we're getting a steeper, steeper yield curve, does that also mean lower probability of recession? Let's hope so. Um, <laughs> because you're talking yes. about some other factors here. Yes, we have always been saying that we think the bond market is going to be the first to fall. So you're looking at a First, equities look good, they're very optimistic. Then people realize, wait a minute, inflation is sticky, that's not great for everything, what's, what's the catch? That would be the bond market actually bottoming out. So we would see the bottom of the, of the bond market first, and then after that, in the wake of that, if we don't have sufficient growth, then that's when you're gonna see equities are gonna be at risk. The problem is that's a multiple step question. Whereas right now where we are, most investors are just thinking about the next quarter, thinking like, okay, this is looking good. They always do, yeah. yeah. 